welcome. My name is Karen Campbell from Awesome Art School. I'm so glad you're joining me today. I have a really fun project that I did today that I want to share with you. I hope it gives you a burst of inspiration. And if you're interested in learning how to do this project in a full length tutorial, you can check out more information about that in the description box below. I hope you enjoy and happy arting. Yeah, so I started with the reference by Arturo Elena and I was on Pinterest, of course, and I have a huge fashion illustration um, board that's filled with, I think I have hundreds of pins in there. And when I am stuck in a rut, my favorite thing to do is to go on Pinterest and just drool over everyone else's artwork, right? But fashion illustration to me is like a whole work of art in and of itself. And it's such a great way because it's not something I'm super familiar with. It's, um, it's, it's related enough to what I do, which is, you know, I love drawing faces and people. And so it's in the same field, which so really turns me on, but I am not that super awesome at it. So I love using fashion illustration as references for my own work because I'm always learning something new. I'm always trying new things. Um, and so I take my favorite designers and I give their style a whirl and just see if I can do it. And I learned so many things along the way. So in this one, of course, I'm practicing my hands, um, which are always a struggle, and all those fingers. Now, the way that he does his girls is all of his fashion models are everything is super elongated. So they have these crazy long necks and limbs and fingers. And I just love his stylized approach to drawing fashion. So when I'm in a rut, not that I'm in a rut, but if I'm not sure what I should do or I'm tired of just doing faces and I want to do a body too, I'll, I'll use, I'll go to that fa fashion illustration board and I'll grab some of my favorite references. And so when I look at these references, I try to think, how can I make this my own? And I'm not just copying exactly what they do. Well, the, I, the way that I like to use them is I like to combine them with my other favorite things to draw, which is whimsical creatures and fairies and mermaids. And so I just think marrying fashion with fantasy is really, really fun and really rewarding. So trying out these different styles and combining them with my own flavors really always comes with results that I'm usually really happy with. This is just for fun. I don't sell any of this stuff. I don't think I could anyways because it's too much like the original that I would just be you know, under copyright strikes right and left. So I love doing this is just for fun and for practice. And I highly recommend, a, you know, the way to learn is by copying from others, not ripping them off, but using them to influence your work, using them to inform your work. Um, I really paid attention closely to his shading techniques. All of, like the, the, um, intimate details on the collarbone and the shoulder blades are just, um, you know, it, it's really, really striking. And the only way to really understand that is to draw it yourself. And so I outline this one in pencil and then I go over it with my, cop my Copic multi-liner and then I'm gonna get ready to start my shading with the Copics in just a second. But like I always like to do in the middle of my videos, for 10 seconds or so, we're gonna have a little cute attack with my cat cam because I just like to bring you a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of fun for my household, either my kids or my cats, and usually it's Rosie. And there she is, goofball. So anyways, now for the best part, Oh, that satisfying rumble um, is is the coloring in part. Now I've been, if you've been following me on YouTube, you know that I've been in a real Copic obsessed mood. I've been doing all these um, face um, expression drawing tutorials and using my Copics. And I've managed to collect all in the gray, the cool grays. So gray one through 10. And um, I'm starting with the C2 as the lightest shade there, and then I'm gradually working my way up to the darker values, just one layer at a time, and really paying close, close attention to how El Toro is doing the shading on this model. Now he, um, I actually don't even know the medium that he uses, shame on me, but I'm trying to recreate that as best I can with a Copics, and it's so interesting and it's such a great learning tool to try to exactly copy the way that someone does their shading or their faces. Again, I'm not selling this. This is just for my own self-education 
and it makes me a better drawer and then hopefully I can take the things that I've learned and pass them along to you as best that I can as, as a teacher. So um, yeah, today is just a, like a classic example of how I get some learning in and some self-expression and of course, some fun, right? <laughs> putting some highlights in her eyes with my Signa gel pen, which was not working too hot. My Poscas are really my go-to to paint pen. I know this question comes up a lot, but definitely those Posca pens are without a doubt my favorite, favorite white paint, paint pen and tool and highlighter of faces and everything. I'm really getting to my Copics lately. I just went and bought, I think maybe, oh God, 16 or so more today, cost a freaking fortune. But I just use them so much and they are refillable. And I gotta tell you, I have tried every cheap imitation Copic on the market and they're okay for a little while, but there's just nothing that quite replaces uh, the magic of a Copic. And as you can see there, I'm going with my Copic fine liner and this is, this is real, real detailed. These, the, her face is so, so tiny. So having a smaller nib, like a 0.25 or 0.2 to get into those tiny areas is really advantageous and it's really worth just having a few of those around. And of course, there's really subtle shading on the reference that I'm using is too. So I'm trying my best to replicate the shading and the highlights on my girl so that it looks like her own and it looks completely different, but I'm using again the highlights and the shadows in the way that he does to keep creating the depth and the volume and the magnificent of these fashion models. Check out my playlist if you wanna see more fashion illustration influenced works.